Chapter Nineteen of Mary, a Fiction by Mary Wollstonecraft. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Eva Gonzalez. Chapter Nineteen. Two days passed away without any particular conversation. Henry, trying to be indifferent, or to appear so, was more assiduous than ever. The conflict was too violent for his present state of health. His spirit was willing, but the body suffered. He lost his appetite and looked wretchedly. His prayers were calm and low. The world seemed to fade away. What was that world to him that Mary did not inhabit? She lived not for him. He was mistaken. His affection was her only support. Without this dear prop, she had sunk into the grave of a lost, long-loved friend. His attention snatched her from despair. Inscrutable are the ways of heaven. The third day, Mary was desired to repair herself. But if the wind continued the same point, they should set sail the next evening. She tried to prepare her mind, and her efforts were not useless. She appeared less agitated than she could have expected, and talked of her voyage with composure. On great occasions she was generally calm and collected. Her resolution would brace her unstrung nerves, but after the victory she had no triumph. She would sink into a state of moping melancholy, and feel thankful misery when the heroic enthusiasm was over. The morning of the day fixed on her. For her departure, she was alone with Henry only a few moments, when an awkward kind of formality made them slip away without their having said much to each other. Henry was afraid to discover his passion, or give any other name to his regard but friendship. Yet his anxious solitude for her welfare was ever breaking out, while she as artlessly expressed again and again her fears with respect to his declining health. We shall soon meet, said he, with a faint smile. Mary smiled too, she called a sickly being. It was still fainter by being reflected, and not knowing what she wished to do, started up and left her room. When she was alone she regretted she had left him so precipitately. The few precious moments I have thus thrown away may never return. She thought the reflection led to misery. She waited for, nay, almost wished for the summons to depart. She could not avoid spending the intermediate time with the ladies and Henry. In a trivial conversation, she was obliged to bear part and harass him more than can be well conceived. The summons came, and the whole party attended her to the vessel. For a while, the remembrance of Anne banished her regrets at parting with Henry, though his pale figure pressed on her sight, it may seem a paradox, but he was more present to her when she sailed, her tears than her whole zone. My poor Anne, thought Mary, along this road we came, and near this spot you called me a guardian angel, and I will leave thee here. I oh, know, I do not. Thy spirit is not confined to its mouldering tenement. Tell me, if thou soul of her I love, tell me, well, whither art thou fled? Anne occupied her until they reached the ship. The anchor was weighed. Nothing can be more irksome than waiting to say farewell. As the day was serene, they accompanied her a little way, and then got into the boat. Henry was the last. He pressed her hands. It had not any life in it. She leaned over the side of the ship without looking at the boat, till it was so far distant, that she could not see the countenances of those that were in it. A mist spread itself over her sight. She longed to exchange one look, tried to recollect the last. The universe contained no being but Henry. The grief of parting with him had swept all others clean away. Her eyes followed the keel of the boat, and when she could no longer perceive its traces, she looked round the wide waste of waters, thought of the precious moments which had been stolen from the waste of murder time. She then descended into the cabin, regardless of the surrounding beauties of nature, and throwing herself on her bed in the little hall which was called the stateroom. She wished to forget her existence. On this bed she remained two days listening to the dashing waves and able to close her eyes. A small taper made the darkness visible. In the third night, by its glimmering light, she wrote the following fragment. Poor solitary wretch that I am, here alone do I listen to the whistling winds and dashing waves, and no human support can I rest. We are not lost to hope without pleasure in the society of those rough beings, but now they appear not like my fellow creatures, and the social ties draw me to them. How long, how dreary has this day been? 
Your eyes cast the witches over. For what will tomorrow bring? Tomorrow and tomorrow will only be marked with the inverted characters of wretchedness. Yet surely I am not alone. Her moistened eyes lifted to heaven. A crowd of thoughts darted into her mind, and pressing her hand against her forehead, as if to bear intellectual weight, she tried, but tried in vain to arrange with them. Father of mercies, compose his troubled spirit. Do I indeed wish it to be composed, to forget my Henry? The mind, the pen was strictly drawn across in an agony. End of chapter 19